Good day girls. Today I will show you how to color blend your fish and the background, be it the coral or the sea sponge or the sea grass. Let me just show you some of the examples that the other girls have done. There are three different spotted sweet lip fish designs I have used. The ones that you are doing were the ones that were actually complete beginning of the year that I could send out for the online girls, which is this fish together with the seagrass background. And the girls have done combinations of either that spotted fish with maybe the coral background or this um, type of spotted fish with the sponge background or any, any combo that they actually preferred. So therefore you will see different backgrounds with different spotted sweet lip fish. And I just want to show you all the different color combinations that they have used. There we go. We are having, the school will be having load shedding shortly. So I'm just quickly wanting to capture these colors while the lights are still on. And then I could still refer back to them later on in the tutorial. But I thought, let me just capture them quickly before load shedding. There we go. Some very wonderful color combos. The girls have decided. You can decide on your own color combo. The basic being that we have the blended colors here in the this part section of the fish then the circles are dark and the inner part of the circle is light light fresh white with a bit of 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 gray or pale color blended in so that it doesn't look too flat right let me move to the other section quickly and here are a few more of the actual spotted sweet lip design fish that you girls are doing online. There we go. Some girls are much further than others. Some haven't even started color blending. So you girls are right on track. Okay, so let's begin with the actual tutorial. Right girls, so um, these are the th three different sweet lip spotted tropical fish designs that are created for the grade 4 grade and here are the different backgrounds as well the three different backgrounds just to show you the combos and then i will also send you the actual photo that i used off google where i got the inspiration from for the fish you will see that, that I'm going to send those photos and the fish are all very much a similar color, which is more like a brownish color. But let's start our tutorial. Right, girls. So first of all, I want to say to you how very, very proud I am of you for managing to draw the seagrass all on your own without me having to video a tutorial for you. I am so proud of you. Well done. You're very quick learners. Excellent. And of course, like I mentioned to your moms, it is based on the same principle that you look at the shape within the rectangular grid and you see where it fits in. Is it in the middle of the line? or what shape there is in the corner exactly the same way you would draw the fish and the patterns where does it fit on the vertical or the horizontal line of the grid and then you draw it according to the same principle it is basically drawing the shapes within each rectangular gridded um, 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 square while well, a rectangular shape and that kind of guides you the horizontal and vertical line same principle no matter what you draw be it a fish the grass or any other image 
Excellent, girls. So there we go. First step that you have to do before you start color blending is you have to erase your grid. You've now drawn your fish, you've drawn the patterns within and your seagrass in the background. So now you rub out your grid. I, I erased mine too, but I believe because I used a 6B pencil, <coughs> excuse me girls, because I used a 6B pencil, my, my um, pencil um, grid and my drawing is quite dark. It's because I wanted you to see the drawing, therefore I used the darker soft 6B pencil. And you can still see a little bit of my lines, but you just make sure that you erase yours. And because if we use a light color oil pastel, the pencil lead will show through. So we need to erase the lines, the horizontal vertical grid. Okay, excellent girls. So now, um, let me just show you, I'll, let, I'll have to take my little... I've got a little MacGyver set up <laughs> We are secure myself in. Let me just show you the different color combinations you can use. <clears throat> right, so this is your family of blues. You start from the darkest and then they have got their names on here. That's number oh, 24, Prussian blue. And that's number 25, ultramarine blue, and that's cobalt blue, 23, and this is your very light blue, pale blue, 14. So you will see in each of your colors, you, you've got from dark to light, that is your brown range, that is your green range, right, that is your or red and orange and yellow range. And then you have your purple, oopsie, your purple being the darkest, and then your pink, and then this old, old rose, and here for the lightest one we've got pale orange. Excellent. And then we've also, lastly, you've got obviously your blue, your black, your grey, and your white. White is very important. I actually always buy a whole box of oil pastels because my white goes down first, and I need my white, and so I buy a whole box just for my white. Great, and also very good pastels. It doesn't matter if you've got another brand, but are these, these oil pastels Pentel. Pentel are nice and oily. So some oil pastels are a bit waxy, a bit dry, but Pentel is nice and oily. Great, girls, so let me go back to my little MacGyver setup. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. So as you saw by the examples that I showed you of what the girls color blended, you can choose your own color, any, any color you want, any color combo. Main thing is that you do your color combo in the, the actual, the, this part of your fish, which would almost we could call the background part of your fish, and the dots are what you will do, a dark outline and a white with a bit of a a color blending of a light color blended together with your white. Okay, so for argument's sake, I will just use this color range here and let me now show you how one blends. If you want to create the element of art called form, which means it's 3D, if you give something form, it's 3D, you can do your lightest color in the middle and then you can slow, you can go darker, darker on either side. Then it looks rounded, like it's got form. So I would start like with the shape of the fish, for instance. One could do it all around. That is that remains white as well. There, all around the, according to the shape of the fish, that would be the middle. Okay, then you do that the lightest yellow. There we go. And then you use your next colors. That, I think that's lemon yellow. Yes, you go to your chrome yellow. But of course you can use your blues, your purples, your greens, any color combo you want. Okay, then when color, to color blend, you actually go over the previous color, like in a circular movement, and then you move on to the white paper. You want the two colors, the two tones, or tints to blend. If they haven't blended all that well, you go back to your lighter one 
and you go over it again on top of that other darker chrome yellow. So you make sure there's a nice blending that takes place so it gets form. It looks 3D and you can do the same on the other side. Obviously, I'm not going to do the whole fish. The video will be too long. I'll just do the sections that you need to need to um, um, be explained to. And then you can just continue on with the rest of these shapes. I'll just do the important ones so you know what to do. And you can carry on on your own because you are very clever girls. Okay, so then we move to the next one. Yellow-orange. This is also how I show the girls in class. I just get them started and they carry on on their own. And I only see the, the learners every second week because the class is divided in two groups, group one and two, according to the class list. The first half would be group one alphabetically and then group two is the second half alphabetically. And then I see the girls every second week, group one, one week, group two, another week. So. If they are 10 weeks in a term, I only see them five times. So that's why you girls are still on track, because you can work in your own time, whereas our school girls that come to school, they only work every second week on their project for one hour. So you can, can easily finish even before them. <laughs> there we go. So there again, you see, so I want, I've moved to the next darker color. But in order for them to blend nicely, I go back to my lighter orange, which is called yellow orange, and then I go over where they meet again, and I just make sure they merge nicely. There we go. So I get that lovely 3D effect. So that was the, I also do the same on the other side. Great. And then your darker one. And it's always easy to go back to the lighter one to make the darker one merge a bit better. There we go. And I can do the same there. Great. And then we move on to our next orangey with vermilion. And then we go there. So you create a lovely 3D effect down there too. Okay. Let's go back to our previous color, make sure it merges nicely, it blends together nicely, great. And then our last, our darkest um, number 11, just red. Okay, so we finish off with that. Blend over, there we go. Excellent, this is so much fun. I love working with color. There we go. Great. So obviously we're not going to, to work on these spotted areas yet, just the in-between space. You could call that the negative space and these spots the positive space, the space behind and in between. The element of art would be space, then the two spaces. Great. So there we go, girls. So you see it creates a nice 3D effect. And as you've seen also on the photo images I've sent you of the actual spotted sweet lip, lip fish, these lines are darker and the inside is white. So that keeps it nice and fresh. So to make that red darker, we're going to use purple. If you use blue, you can also use purple. If you use green, you can use dark blue to make it purple. Or you can also just maybe use a black and then you go over it again with... See, now there I'm using your purple. And then I'm going over it with red to make it dark. Or perhaps best is to just... Because you girls will use a whole different variety of colors. Let's just go show with the black. Do you use black? That will really make it nice and punchy. So you use black and take your darkest color, be it your red or your purple or your blue, and you go over it. Press quite hard. You don't want it to be just black on its own because that can be black on its own. can be a little bit of a dull or dead color. It's always nice to add a color to it to just give it that, you know, that bit of 
life almost. There we go. Okay, so, so you want a nice contrast. It's actually better with black and then it's a bit harsh black on its own. So we soften it a bit with the red. Okay, and you work it like that until you're happy. Great. So then, for the inside, we are going to use, oh, here's my, there we go, your white. I'm going to cut these bits off. Let me just see this white here. I'm going to cut these bits off. The one, two, three, that is photocopied, so that won't erase. I'm going to cut it off so I can frame your artwork afterwards. Okay, just make sure your white is nice and clean. Great, and then you're going to press hard with your white on the inside of the circle. There we go. And just so, so it's not too flat, we can maybe use a lighter color like this pale orange. Or, or even if you just want to use the lighter color of your same family range you've used, you can use your light yellow just so you don't get too confused. And then you just go over it with your white again. Okay, just so it doesn't look too flat, make it look a little bit 3D. Okay, there we go. See, so it's not just white on its own, it's got a bit of tinting in it. Okay, so obviously that will be dark all around. These, these lines here. These outer lines of the circle, a bit of black. If you want to do it blacker there and where it's light, you can leave it more just red because that is so light that still works as a darker um, tone. Okay, so you can play around with it like that. You can even lighten it maybe a bit more. See, so as one creates, one grows and learns. So that will make it even look even more 3D if it's also light. If the outline is light where your center t toning or tinting is light. Right. So then that will be darker there, going from darker to lighter. Great, girl. So you can have fun and play around and experiment like that. The main thing is dark outline. You don't have to do it according to light, from light going darker, darker, darker. You can also just, as you've seen with the other examples, merge the colors, just as you wish. As long as I see color blending taking place because that creates a nice 3D effect. Right, so there we continue. You can always refer back to the images. That would also be white. Okay, and then let me show you, so, so you can carry, oopsie daisy, that one is, I jumped a bit much, so that's the next tonal range. Okay, this is so much fun. Once you start, you just want to carry on, and you go to your lights again. Okay, so there we go. Right, girls, so now you can continue with the basic shape of the fish and the patterns. The next thing I want to show you is how to do the eye. So the eye, you can see is, the eyes I've done blue on the, 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 the center, the actual eye is blue, with like a black pupil, and then we just do 3D shading. There's one, two circles around the actual eye that we do shading with. So, we can, you can use your darkest color. Again, go. I, I like working at the flat end of an oil pastel that's flat, because you can get a nice detail there. So, I hope you can see, okay. It is low chilling now, but there is, should be enough light. Okay, so we work around, and so we outline it with the darker. You can use your dark, your darkest of your color range that you've used. Oopsie daisy. Ah! I haven't, I can't really see. There we go. Oh, let's move the paper so we can see better. I must say, um, oil pastel is very forgiving. Usually I use a sharp object. Um, I shouldn't use, just one moment please. 
Right, girls, oil pastel is a very forgiving medium. So if you go over the line or you, 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 you want to get rid of a color, you accidentally made a mistake, you put the wrong color in the wrong place, you can always scratch it off a little bit with a sharp corner of a ruler. And there we go, can you see? So that kind of scratches off the main bulk of the color. Great, so let's continue. There, and there, and there. Excellent. You can also maybe put a little bit of, can you see, yes, a little, a little bit of black here and there, just to make it look a bit more 3D and not so flat, just in areas. Great. Okay, there we go. So I've outlined it with my darkest color of whatever tonal range you're using and bits of black. Okay, so I mentioned the center we want to do blue. So let's start with our lightest blue. It's going to have a little black pupil. So there, and then we do some shading with another blue. So we can use this ultramarine blue. Okay, always, always maybe use the corners that are nice and flat because there you can get lovely, oopsie, lovely detail, thin lines. Sorry, um, is it my hand casting a shadow? There we go. Okay, great. So now we're going to do a bit of color blending with the blue for the eye, make it look a bit 3D. There we go. So just the one section we we put out ultramarine and then we go back to the lighter blue to color blend it. Great. And then we put a black pupil in. Excellent. There we go. Marvelous. If you want to give it a little bit of a highlight, we can use some white. A bit of a sparkle in the eye. Great. And now we can use these other colors for. Okay, let's go with a bit of a lighter one. Just in sections, we use different. There's obviously not enough space to use all the colors, so we just do little bits of, of the various tonal ranges. Then I'll go to the lighter one, a bit there, just to create a nice 3D effect. Maybe go to my other color, but oh, that's a tiny bit dark. Let me go to this nice yellow. Okay, so it's a bit of each color. So again, not just using one, which tends to make it look flat, but to use a whole range so it can look a bit 3D. I want to add a bit of white in for a little bit of highlight here and there. Okay, you can do that. Great, a little bit more red. So you just continue until you feel happy with it. Okay, a little bit more to create a lovely 3D effect. Great girl, so there you see it's a quite, it's a, not a flat eye, but it's got a bit of different tonal ranges. Hey, excellent. So that was the one, one thing you needed to have explained to. Now, if you look at this fish, oh, I like. Just working it until I'm happy. So I'm going to just persevere a bit more. Because my art does speak to me. Says, oh, I need to do this a bit more, do that a bit more. Just to get that wow factor. I love creating a wow factor. There we go. That is this. Oh, not just good, but let's do it very good. Let's aim for Excellence, eh? Hey, like our school's motto. 
achieve, learn, achieve, excel. Right. There we go. Perfect. Well, almost perfect, <laughs> but good enough. There we go, girls. So now we also, I just want to show you here, that will also be white and then the lips. The lips, you will, you can just color blend. This will all be white. Also with your, with your um, lighter tonal range. Can you see? Yes. There we go. You can use your, just worried that it's, I'm casting a shadow on my actual drawing. Can you see okay there? And then you just color blend it in. Great. You can play around if you want to put a bit of, if you want to use one of the other colors, what also works very nicely is the pale brown number seven. That also goes nice with your orangey red yellow color range. Even in here, you can use some sections also. That you, well, well, obviously you're going to use your own color range, but just look at the various colors and see which other colors would go nice with your with your lighter with your lighter areas. For instance, if you do blues, grays would also work nice with the lighter areas. And if you do greens. If you do greens, like lemon yellow would work nice with your lighter areas. And well, obviously of the purples, you've got these two uh, old rose and pale orange. Pale orange could also work nice. Yes, I think we did. Yes, pale orange, we did mention that. You see, so just see. Um, no, no, none of the girls have done this color range, but that could also be very nice. Quite natural. And then you have a black outline. Okay, great girls. So, then we just make sure those lips, they, they protrude a little bit more. So you can even go to maybe your darker, your darker tints and tones just to bring them out. But always remember, we want 3D lips. So you blend, you blend. Make it look nice and 3D. You can put a bit of that there too. A bit of that there. But underneath. And then you go over it with your white again. Excellent. Okay, so it's got a quite a nice 3D-ish. Whoopsie daisy. Effect. Right. So, so that's the, the eye, the actual fish, the mouth, and now the fins. The fins are, I've noticed with the girls, they are a little bit tricky. Oopsie, let me just, sorry about that. I just wanted to pick up the oil pastel, because once one stands on them, they're quite messy. Okay, so, so if we look at what I've created here, I've done the... You get the texture, another element of art is texture. The texture of the of the fin is quite bony. Okay, you all know fish and the, the fins are quite bony. Okay, so I've and there's the tail, the tail's also like a, a fin, yes. So you see it's got a different texture, it's got those streaks in. Okay, and that pattern kind of merges into the texture, the streaky texture of the bony fins. So let's start off with, oh, and I see it's a bit darker there too, okay. So let's, let's keep that kind of close by as an example. This could be a bit tricky. And put a page underneath here. A little piece of paper. Great. Can we see? Yes, that's fun. I don't want to press too hard on my actual drawing. Can you still see? Yes, great. So we're going to start, okay, well obviously here my, my fish is more browny, orange, yellow. So obviously we stick to our same colors 
and we're going to do these patterns here in similar colors so they're a bit darker there and then a bit lighter on the inside so it's not actually white here but let's just use that color range okay and then let's also make a dark stripe here can you see yes am i still recording great a dark stripe there great so that's the initial drawing and then we're going to go with the dark red make those streaky those actual lines oh here's another one ah, now that one's white on the inside okay so we leave that white great great girls so now we're going to keep that kind of streaky drawing texture here on the top you see it's the whites and the gray so let's just start there first we're going to bring the whites the lighter color range and i'm going over over that uh, pattern that dotted pattern okay so i'm going over that and let me bring in some of the yellow look i'm making streaks some of the lighter colors there we go and let me actually i don't know if i should bring in gray i haven't used gray in the fish so let's maybe leave that bring in this other color pale brown just to get those lighter areas in there we go those lighter areas okay so we go over it quite streakily and you see it's also quite light there so we can actually go across this pattern it's all about looking looking at those colors and drawing or color blending what we see okay so now let's go to the bottom section that's quite dark here and it's even a bit of black so because i've used a bit of black in the circle i'm also going to use a tiny bit of black here just to so it stands out from the rest of the fish there we go a little bit of black at the bottom and then i'm going to go over those main lines that we drew initially just to make it a bit darker too great so that so so that it differentiates them from these red lines okay so there we go dark at the bottom there we go up nice and streaky bony excellent so i'm going to demonstrate this one to you and then you can just do the rest according to this demonstration Let's bring in a bit of depth here, so this pattern has got a bit more kind of 3D form to it. And now we just work with our different colors. Think of that, that texture of the, of the fin of a fish as you'd color blend that bony, stringy texture okay and then just work into it let's bring a bit lighter here so i'm going over everything with this streaky gesture of kind of color blending the movement of my hand see making lines and i work into it until it kind of speaks to me hey it says yes i think now i'm done i like what i see so you just carry on any other colors let's try this one it's actually nice that the 
fins are different, a nice different texture. Texture is the element of art. It's the way something feels, be it rough, smooth, soft, hard. So here we have like a stringy texture, bony texture, and the other fish is more kind of, I know it's got scales, but it's, in comparison to the fin, it is a bit smoother. Okay, girls, so I think we're getting there. Can maybe bring a bit more white in there, a bit more light in there. So you just carry on. If you're, obviously, if your fish is purple, you will use the purple color range, purples and pinks and pale rose. And the same goes for the blue and the green color ranges. Okay, so I think that's fine. Let me see. Kind of speaks as a fin with different texture. Great. A bit lighter there, maybe a bit of light. Okay, so there we go, girls. So that's the fin. I could still carry on and on, but I do not want this video to get too long. So, you've got the idea. So you would do the same here. Also, you can look at this. You can always refer back to this fish there. See, it's darker at the bottom. Those patterns actually almost disappear. Right. And here, this one, that is similar to that. And then here at the bottom, I see the patterns have also almost disappeared. Or if you want to, uh, they were, that one was in initially, but it's kind of merged with the tone. So you can use your artistic license. If you want to keep the patterns and let them merge as we've done there or if you just want to go from dark to light that streaky way of color blending great girls so that's the fish please if you've got any questions just ask me okay so now let's let's move on to the grass so the grass would be similar <coughs> color blending here so we, usually where, it's, where it kind of folds, it would be darker, like in shadow, or behind the fish, it would be a little bit darker, and then it goes light. There is another fold, so it goes darker. But it is the same principle, really. So you would work with, let's, let's work down here. So there's, I hope you can see, there's a fold, so that's quite dark. And it's put dark also underneath behind the fish. And then we color blend with all our lovely greens. Now I just want to say at this stage, if you have made a green fish, you could make red seagrass or seaweed. In the ocean, anything really goes because it is such a marvelous, magnificent place. There are so many different colors. As long as you have a different color from your fish, your seagrass or seaweed needs to be different and your water needs to be different. So if you do a blue fish, you could do green seagrass or purple seagrass or seaweed. And you could even do red water because you're using your artistic license and also it could be the reflection of a sunset in the water. So you could actually use any colors you want as long as they Contrast. As long as you don't use the same color for the fish, and the, obviously you must use different colors, so they, they, the one stands out from the other. They can't be the same. You can't do a red fish and red grass, because then that won't pop. You need this to stand out, so you understand what I mean. So let's carry on. So here we, we color blend. Again, I'm worried about throwing a shadow on the work. Let me see. Yeah, that's better. So again, we just do the same as we did with the fish. We go over the other color, the darker color. Then we move to our next tonal range, go over it. If it doesn't blend very well, we just go back to the previous one, do little circular movements, and there we go. And then our lightest one. Excellent. So that... Seagrass looks nice and 3D, and that would be in the shadow underneath, and then it goes lighter again. There we go. Great, what fun. 
So that's the seaweed. So you can just carry on. You can start from dark at the, can you see? From dark at the bottom. And also modern art. With modern art, people have drawn faces that are green and purple and pink and blue. With art, anything really goes. So you can be like a nice modern funky artist and you can create your own color water, seaweed or seagrass and fish. The one girl has even done a rainbow fish, which is put all the colors into the fish. The main thing is you know how a rainbow works. It's from red to purple to blue to green to yellow, then orange, red, that rhythm. If you mix purple and yellow, it goes brown. So, so you have to stick to certain families so, because other colors, you can't really mix too well together. The colors you can't mix too well together are the opposites. Now, the opposite of blue is orange. If you mix blue and orange together, that doesn't really go. It goes brown. If you mix yellow and purple together, it goes brown. And you can even put a bit of yellow of um, here because yellow goes nice with green. Because that comes according to the rainbow. After green, you get yellow. So always think of the rainbow colors. The colors next to one another go well together. But the opposite colors on the color wheel, on the color wheel you, you get your three primary colors. Let me quickly show you. Here, um, right, you get your, your, this would be your color wheel, and then you get your red, that's your red, okay, let me just make these here, oh, I'm just doing this so quickly now, okay, opposite of red is green, so, you can't mix your opposites because they become brown. Okay, they are brown. You'll put brown in the middle. That's the tertiary color. These are your primary colors. Your three primary colors are yellow, red, yellow, and blue. Those are your three primaries. Okay, I should have actually just done it first. Your three primaries. Ignore that green. Those are your three primaries. But if you mix blue and yellow, you get green. So if you mix those two, you get green, and that's your secondary color. Okay, so that's secondary, and this is primary. That's primary. That's primary. If you mix your red and yellow together, you get orange. Now, on the color wheel, what is opposite of orange? Blue. You can't mix those two together. They, that's a second, that, then you get brown. Okay, so if you mix red and blue together, you get purple. Right, so that's your color wheel. Okay, that's also a second. Your three primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. Okay, and then you get your secondaries. If you mix your red and your yellow, it's orange. Your blue and your yellow, green. Your blue and your red, purple. Right, so, so these, color, these colors go well. Okay, those colors go well, and those colors go well. But I think best is you also draw yourself a little color wheel and then the opposites. You can't, for instance, do a C starting with blue and going into orange because they're going to, they're going to become brown. You see there's orange and there's blue. That's the kind of a murky, well, it's a kind of a murky brownish, bluish. It's, 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 it's not a very bright color. It's a kind of a... Oh, yeah, brown, eh? becomes brown. And the same with purple, and you can't start with purple and go to yellow, because it also becomes like a brownie color. And the same with your red, 
and your green that also becomes like a browny color some browns are more red some browns are more yellow some browns are more purpley but it's still a, a kind of a browny color if you see okay girls so just remember that right so like i say you can use your own color combos if you want to add a bit of white at the end of this to make it sp a bit more sparkly excellent i must say i have enjoyed so now teaching you how to color blend so with the with this gr blue with the green you can add a bit of blue because that's a similar family to make it a bit darker if you want to okay but then I would add a bit of blue everywhere, just here and there. So it kind of marries together and is kind of, it works harmoniously together. Right, and then let's carry on. Oopsie daisy. Don't worry if your oil pastels break. They're there to create beautiful art. They're not there to look pretty. They're there to create beautiful art. Okay. Inevitably they will break. But it is, shows that they have been well used. Okay, so you, excuse me, but I sometimes just use my fingernail to scratch off dirty colors. But you can use a tissue to clean your oil pastels. Okay, so there we go. And then, and then if you want to do your water, you can, okay, I'll, I'll just stick with blue. I'll be conventional. Then you, obviously, you, you do the same principle of your water. You go from dark, or you can start light, from light to dark, or from dark to light. And I go with all my different blues. There we go. And merging them again together. Which was the other one? Oh, I missed out on the ultramarine. Okay, here can be a bit of a darker streak. So it doesn't necessarily have to be from dark to light or light to dark you can also just just merge them together like i've done in this one here okay excellent girls so i hope you have enjoyed this art tutorial on color blending and i think i have covered everything um please let me know oh can you see Please let me know if you need, if you've got any questions. And oh yes, um, the time factor on this work, as I mentioned, I only see the, the school girls every second week and some of them are still busy drawing. Can you believe it? Are still busy drawing the background because sometimes they're absent or for any other reason the, on Fridays. With breakup day, I don't get to see the grade fours because of breakup day or public holidays, etc. So, um, so you can hand this in. You know, you can you can, next term. Next term is fine. They'll probably still be busy with it next term, towards the middle of next term or so. So there's absolutely no time pressure. But if you want to send me photographs of your progress. That would be wonderful. It'd be wonderful for you to keep in touch. And yes, there we go. Enjoy color blending, girls. Great. And so that's it from me. Bye-bye. And stay safe. And stay warm. Bye.